All right, starting in the West with the Portland Trailblazers, who they're still in the hunt right now for the playoffs, but it seems inevitable that they're probably going to miss it. Um, so I have them finishing as the 13th seed. They're going to go into next summer with, I believe, a pretty solid draft pick. So we're going to see, I guess, how they end up developing their team. So with the Utah Jazz, I think they will finish as the 12 seed and unfortunately miss the playoffs. I mean, we saw at the trade deadline, they dished out guys like Mike Conley and uh, Malik Beasley and Jared Vanderbilt. It seemed like they were basically giving up on the season. Guys like, you know, Chris Dunn, it's nice to see him back in the NBA. Uh, you got um, other players that have just like gotten more role, like Rudy Gay's got an increased playing time lately. It just seems like they've kind of given up on the season. Jordan Clarkson hasn't played much lately, neither has Colin Sexton. So I think the 12 seed is where they'll probably finish. For the Los Angeles Lakers, I think they will finish as the 11 seed. I know they've played pretty well recently, but they are going to come up with a weird stretch. I believe they got some away games coming up. Uh, I think those Bulls games are going to be really tough because I think, you know, Patrick Beverly, he's definitely been an energizer for Chicago since he's been there. So it's going to be hard, I guess, for them to overcome um, what he instills in the locker room that day. Uh, so I don't know. The, those are going to be a tough matchup for sure. They got the Suns yet. I just don't know if they're going to be able – they got the Clippers too. So I don't know if they're going to be able to – you know, get over that hump. Like I said, I know they've played good so far, but of course LeBron's still not healthy, and we don't know when he's going to officially be back. For the 10 seed, I think it'll be the New Orleans Pelicans, and I think, you know, being in the play-in is where they will be. Now, unfortunately, I think that they will lose probably that first game in the play-in, uh, and it's really tough because of the year that they were having, you know, like when Zion was healthy. Um, you know, they were up there with as the one seed for a bit, but they were top two, top three, top four at least. And then, like, they just kind of fell just so drastically. So it's unfortunate for them because last year they had a great year and they came back. But I think they'll lose that first, that 9 10 playing game, uh, and they'll be the 10th seed. So the next team I got is the Oklahoma City Thunder, who I think will finish as the nine seed. They've been playing really good lately. It's hard to believe that. They're such a young team. I think they're one of the youngest teams ever. I think I saw they're like the second youngest team uh, in league history or something like that. And I think they're the youngest currently. But they really don't play like it. And, I mean, Shea has had a great year. Jalen Williams has really stepped up. Josh Giddy, Lou Dort. They just have so many guys who, you know, especially like Lou, Lou Dort has experience. You know, the other Jalen Williams is stepping up as well. And I think Mark Dagnall is a really underrated coach. Um, but he's got them playing hard, and I think they'll be a nine seed. So as I said with the Pelicans, they'll lose that 10 seed game. They'll be the nine seed. They'll win that first playing game, and I actually think they'll win the second playing game too, just the way they're playing, and I think they'll get that official eight seed for the playoffs. I just, I just have a lot of trust in them right now. They seem like that energizing team. There's always an energizing young team that has come out in the play-in and showed out. We saw two years ago the Grizzlies did it against the Warriors. Uh, we saw last year it was the Pelicans, and I think this year it's going to be the Thunder. So my number eight seed is the Dallas Mavericks, uh, and it's I do think they are going to lose that first playing game, which means I do think they're also going to lose that game to the Oklahoma City Thunder and miss out on the playoffs, which is really tough because – you know, there's there's so many playoff candidates this year, probably even still right now, there's like 12 realistic ones. Um, but I don't know. Like, I, I just don't like the way that Luka and Kyrie have kind of fit well together. It still seems like a growing process. It's going to take some time. And with Kyrie, you know, in, in the summer, like he very well could be gone. So it might not even get to come into fruition ever. So I don't know. I just haven't really liked the way this team has gone. I think their defense kind of took a hit getting rid of Dorian Finney-Smith. So I think they're going to miss the playoffs, but they will finish with the eighth best record and then lose both playing games. So my number seven seed I have is the Minnesota Timberwolves, who I think they will win that first playing game, of course, uh, and get that seven seed. Um, you know, just getting Cat back, they're going to get Ant back pretty soon, most likely. I think they're kind of coming all together at once at the right time. 
Um, you know, McDaniels, Kyle Anderson, they've really stepped up with other guys gone. And I think Mike Conley has had probably his best stretch of the season, like over the past like two ish weeks. So I think that they'll finish in that seven seed. I think that the Golden State Warriors will be the six seed. Um, you know, it's just hard to expect them to overcome a lot of these other teams, given how bad they've been on the road this year. I mean, they're by far, of all the teams that are in the play-in or better, they're the worst road team out there. And it's especially because, you know, I believe they got just as many to end the year yet as home games. It's it's going to be hard to overcome that. They're probably going to be just around 500 by the time this season wraps up. And I, I don't know how that looks for them in the playoffs. So the fifth seed, I think it will be the Los Angeles Clippers, um, you know, it's going to be hard for them to move up anymore. I thought maybe they were going to get into a rhythm, but now with Paul George injured and we don't really know when he's coming back, it's going to be hard to dictate that. They've also been kind of up and down all year long. Like they'll go on a small win streak, they'll go on a losing streak, and ultimately it seems like they're kind of just a, like a tick better than the Warriors so far they've been this year, but still not really in a great class themselves. So I'm going to go with them as the fifth seed. I think that the... Phoenix Suns will end up as the four seed. Um, you know, Kevin Durant, they said he's supposed to maybe be back earlier than what people originally thought, so that's good news. And I just think that, you know, having him, Chris Paul, and Devin Booker, it provides three guys that can work in an area that's kind of been abandoned lately. Um, so that gives them, like, a huge advantage in that department that a lot of people probably aren't going to be familiar with covering, like on the defensive end, if you're talking other teams. And, I mean, we'll just have to see what happens from there. I mean, this team does have some experience. Kevin Durant's a multiple-time champion. So, I, I mean, I like their chances at at least being a top-four seed and getting home court advantage. I think that the Sacramento Kings will be the three seed. Um, you know, they've had a great year. Definitely cannot count them out. Their defense has been a little sketch, but one thing about them is that they could win on any given night. I think they're probably the most balanced team in the Western Conference, both at home and on the road. Uh, you know, De'Aaron Fox is probably the clutch player of the year. Demonis Sabonis has had a, probably his best year of his career. I know he's been an all-star a couple times, but this is probably his best season of his career. Definitely his most important, I would say. And just the other guys like Keegan Murray stepped up, Kevin Herter, Malik Monk, uh, Terrence Davis on occasion. Like, there's just so many guys on that team that you can count on sometimes. Harrison Barnes as well uh, to just give a great performance. Trey Lyles too, so... I got the Kings at three. I think the Memphis Grizzlies will be the two seed. Um, you know, they're getting Ja back. They're getting, um, I believe, Steven Adams, too, and then Jaron Jackson Jr. They're kind of getting their guys back at the right time, so it's good for them. I think now that everyone's kind of put this Ja stuff, even though it's not, like, totally behind us, but, like, it's kind of behind us to an extent with, like, the peak of how much it's in the news. Um, so I think now they can kind of focus their attention more so on between the lines on the court. And I think that's good for them too, because I mean, they were a really good team last year. Injuries hurt them in the playoffs. And I think this year they're going to want revenge. So I, I think they'll finish too. And then the Denver Nuggets, I think will be the one seed. I feel like there's not much to explain here. Um, you know, Jokic is playing again, like an MVP. Jamal Murray's healthy. Michael Porter Jr. is healthy. And I mean, we all knew that when all these guys are, at least healthy to a degree, like that they're going to be a team that's contending basically every year. The last few years that we haven't really seen that because they weren't. So, and Aaron Gordon's played like arguably an all-star. Um, you know, they made some recent additions like Reggie Jackson at the deadline in the off season with Bruce Brown. Um, so it, it should be interesting to see how this all plays out. Now in the Eastern Conference with the Orlando Magic, I think they will end up as the 13th seed, but not really much I'm going to add here, but what I will say is that this is a team you want to look out for next year, especially since they might end up getting two uh, lottery picks. So uh, de definitely a team that I think could make a lot of noise next year, especially if they're healthy. That's the big thing too. Number 12 seed, it, er, I have the Indiana Pacers, I think will be the number 12 seed. Um, they've just had a lot of injuries. It seems like they're almost about to hit that give up button. Um, not quite as many veterans either, so it seems like they're kind of building more toward long-term, so I think that they will finish as the 12th seed. 
I think the Washington Wizards will finish 11th. Um, you know, they have more veteran players than Indiana, but at the same time, I just don't know quite how good they are. Like, when you compare, like, their big three of Bradley Beal and Chris Stapps Porzingis and uh, Kyle Kuzma, how does that really stack up in the rest of not just the East but in the NBA? And I just don't really know how well it's going to get you there. Um, you know, Kuzma's had a great year. We're going to see what happens with him in the summer, but I just don't know if it'll be enough. So for the number 10 seed, I think it'll be the Toronto Raptors will be the 10 seed. Um, I believe they have a decently hard schedule. It's not like anything like one side or another, um, but they've just been really inconsistent this year, starting with Fred Van Vliet. He was an all-star last year. Now this year he's kind of been way too up and down. Scotty Barnes hasn't taken the step that I think people hoped he would. Um, and just their depth has not been that great. Neither really has their shooting. I think the Atlanta Hawks will finish as the ninth seed. Um, and the reason I think they'll finish ninth is where we currently are, it is pretty close with eighth, ninth, and tenth. But I think, you know, they do play Chicago coming up. That is in Chicago, who's also had the tiebreaker over them this year. And at that point, you know, they're all going to be tied for the same number of losses. And I feel like they're kind of all in the same wavelength. And I believe that the Bulls would have the tiebreaker over them. Uh, Atlanta just hasn't really had a great year. I mean, firing their coach, the Trey Young rumors, I think that they'll probably finish ninth. And I think that, you know, I didn't say, but I think Toronto will lose as the 10th seed in the first playing game. And then I think Atlanta will lose as the ninth seed in the next playing game after beating them. The number eight seed, I have the Chicago Bulls as the number eight seed. Um, you know, they've started to pick it up better ever since adding Patrick Beverly. They've really had an up and down season as well, but it seems like of these teams kind of in the play and mix, they probably had the biggest turnaround since the trade deadline or since the, uh, all-star break at the very least. So I would expect them to kind of make a little bit of a run near the end of the year here. Uh, and I think they could almost get maybe to a 500 record potentially or very close to, uh, so I think that they'll finish as the eighth seed and i think they will actually win the first playing game too i have the brooklyn nets as the number seven seed um you know they've just kind of been on a slide lately it hasn't really been looking too good after trading durant and kyrie uh Mikel bridges has looked nice cam johnson cam thomas like they have players that'll be good for them long term but I just don't know if they've been able to match the chemistry yet. There is a lot of like a weird mix of veterans and young guys on that team. Um, so, but I think Jock Vaughn is going to have these guys playing hard and I think that they will be enough to get into the playoffs, but I think that they will probably lose that first playing game. I think the Miami heat, um, you know what? Scratch that. <laughs> I think the New York Knicks, will finish as the sixth seed. Um, you know, just New York has also had a resurgence here this year. Two years ago, they were the top four in the East. No one saw it coming from a mile away. Last year, it felt like they took a step back. But this year, you know, the young guys have kind of bought in more. Um, but, you know, we're starting to see, like, they're kind of on a slide, especially, like, Tom Thibodeau recently was talking about, like, how we can't lose sight of, like, the ultimate goal. And I feel like the team that I have one spot ahead of them probably is more familiar with what the ultimate goal is, even though they haven't really reached it in this era. But I, I got the Knicks number six. I think the Miami Heat will be number five. Um, you know, they have stepped it up to a degree lately. Um, I will say it seems like they've kind of been up and down, though, most of the year. But it seems also like Jimmy Butler is more so just getting ready for the playoffs. You know, Tyler Hero, Bam Adebayo, Oladipo's had, I would say, a better year this year, even though maybe the stats don't really show it. The biggest question is just Kyle Lowry. You know, like, where is he going to, I guess, like, fit in when it comes playoff time? Because last year in the playoffs, he was dealing with some injuries, and then ultimately, like, we never really saw what we hoped for out of Kyle Lowry. Uh, so maybe if we can expect that maybe in the playoffs this year, then they have a chance. I think the Cleveland Cavaliers will be the fourth seed. They have a decent gap room uh, between three and five currently, so I, don't, I just don't think that'll change. Donovan Mitchell's had a great year. They've had the best defense in the league for most of the year, so I, I like what they're doing in Cleveland. 
I think the Boston Celtics will be the number three seed. Um, you know, they've kind of been on a slide lately and a little bit inconsistent, probably the worst time, um, which is also kind of weird. I mean, I know they've had some guys that they kind of sat out or whatever, but for the most part, I mean, everyone's kind of been back for a consistent basis. So I'm kind of surprised by that. Uh, maybe it just could be burnout because they started off so hot. Um, and it could just, that really could just be what it is. It might not be much of anything, but I think they'll finish third. I think the Philadelphia 76ers will finish as the second seed. I think before the season I had them as first, but they got off to a really slow start. But right now they're playing maybe the best basketball in the NBA and Joel Embiid looking like an MVP candidate um, per usual. But he, it looks like his case is as strong as it's ever been. So, you know, Harden's been playing pretty well. Uh, you know, Tyrese Maxey is back and he's, you know, putting up numbers again like he was earlier in the year. Uh, so I, and DeAnthony Melton's been playing really good too. So I, I think they'll finish second. Then I got the Milwaukee Bucks at number one. Um, you know, simply Giannis has done a great job this year, and so has Drew Holiday as well uh, with keeping this team afloat. I think Brooke Lopez and Bobby Portis as well. They've done good at protecting the paint, stretching the floor. Um, you know, Portis is probably a six man of the year candidate and Brooke Lopez is probably a defensive player of the year candidate. So got to give them credit there. And really, if, you know, Middleton could get more into a consistent groove over this last stretch, like they could kind of pull away here uh, with the one seed. Um, okay, so now I'll do I'll do like my bracket based on like how I said it. Um, I probably I guess should have done it before then. But uh, I guess I don't know how you're going to organize it. So here we go. Uh, so in the Western Conference, with my one seed Denver and my eight seed Oklahoma City Thunder, um, you know OKC is a tough young team, and I don't know if Denver's quite ready for that. So I actually think Denver will win this, but in six games, um, I think they'll catch them sleeping, maybe in game one, and then another game in there. I'll give them because um, they're not going to quit for sure. So I got Denver in six um, with my two seed Memphis and my seven seed Minnesota. This would be awesome because it's like a rematch of last year. Um, and that series last year went pretty far distance as well. But this, man, this is going to be tough. I think it'll go seven, but I'm still going to probably roll with Memphis just because, you know, it seems like they have a little bit more taste of the playoffs than this Minnesota core. Um, but Anthony Edwards, like you can never count against him. He played great against them last year. Uh with my three seed Sacramento Kings and the six seed Golden State Warriors, I think the Sacramento Kings will win in probably five games, which might seem crazy. It could be six, but I'll say five games. Um, you know, the Warriors have just been too bad on the road. Like I feel like they'll they'll lose this series essentially in the first couple games, and the Warriors need to be like perfect on the ro- on at home, and they need to steal one on the road every series basically throughout the playoffs. Uh, based on where I have them. So I just I just don't see that happening. Um, so I got the Sacramento Kings beating them probably in five. Uh, the four-seed Suns and five-seed Clippers. It really sucks that Paul George just got hurt because I probably would have actually leaned it toward the Clippers here. Um, but, you know, just out of being safe, I'm going to go with how it was two years ago when these teams played Suns and six. Uh, you can't count against Kevin Durant. Of course, you know, Kawhi Leonard is great, and he probably rises more in the playoffs than maybe any player from their regular season form, you could argue. But I don't know. I just personally think that it's hard to bet against a team that has KD, uh, Chris Paul, and Devin Booker, and also, like, DeAndre Ayton, who's probably, like, seen now as, like, the fourth key element on that team. I mean, that's just a tough team. Um... I'll do the first round of the East, too, and then I'll keep going. So in the Eastern Conference, the 1C Milwaukee Bucks and the 8C Brooklyn Nets, this will probably and unfortunately be a sweep. Um, you know, there, there's gonna there's always usually at least one sweep, and this is probably the best case to pick one. The Nets are on the downhill slide. The Bucks have been moving up lately. So I'm going to go with Bucks and four, but I could very well see the Nets winning at least one game. My two seed Philadelphia and the seven seed Chicago. This is a really interesting one because, you know, we know how great Joel Embiid, he's almost like invincible 
against the Chicago Bulls. I know he just lost recently to them, but he's almost like invincible uh, against the Chicago Bulls. But at the same time, James Harden has struggled a lot over the years against the Chicago Bulls. So you might have like a weird balance there in between. Um, I'm still going to pick Philadelphia to win this series, but I think it might go six games actually in a playoff format. Uh, the three seed Boston Celtics and the six seed New York Knicks. Mm, this would be really tough. The Knicks did actually get them uh, a couple weeks ago, but I think Boston will win this one in six as well. And then my four seed Cleveland and five seed Miami Heat. This is kind of tough, but I'm going to go actually Cleveland in five. I don't think the original pick of Cleveland is tough. I feel like that's, I'd be pretty sure with that. It's just. Picking them in five games does seem crazy just because what we've known out of the heat over the past few years and how competitive they are. But at the same time, Cleveland's played so good against Miami. You know, like it seems like Miami is one of these teams that's always like locking down uh, the star players and stuff like that, but they really haven't done that with Donovan Mitchell much this year. And while they can lock down, I think that the Cavaliers can almost do so at a better rate. I'm just really interested to see how Darius Garland does in his first playoff series, and I think that'll give me a better idea. But we know what Donovan Mitchell's going to bring. We know what Jared Allen's going to bring. Um, it's just a matter of kind of the younger players with little to no experience. So in the second round in the West, I think the one-seed Denver Nuggets and the four-seed Phoenix Suns, I think that the Denver Nuggets will win this in seven games which might seem crazy because, you know, I was just propping up the Suns. But, um, you know, Denver has been insane at home. They're almost like invincible on their home court. And they've also been better on the road than Phoenix. So I could very well see them coming out. I mean, I'm sure they still have in the back of their mind a few years ago when they played in the playoffs. And they're like, well, Jamal Murray, if he was healthy, we probably would have beat him. That's I'm sure what they're saying. I think Jokic still has a riff with Cameron Payne, who's still on that Phoenix Suns team, and they went at it in that series. But um, I'm going to go with the Denver Nuggets in seven. I think that they've just been the more consistent team this year. It's not like kind of expecting them to throw it all together at once. Like Denver's had a full year under their belt uh, to get together, and I think that they'll actually win this series. Uh, The two-seed Memphis Grizzlies and the three-seed Sacramento Kings. This might sound crazy, but I'm actually picking the Sacramento Kings to win this. Like I said, the Kings have the perfect balance, I think, in the Western Conference between on the road and at home. You know, like they could beat you on any given night. And I think they're more likely to steal a game in Memphis than Memphis is to steal a game in Sacramento. And I know Memphis has almost been invincible at home as well this year. But they're also really a hard team to predict because sometimes they'll play better, it seems like, with uh, John Morant or um, without John Morant. And then, like, the next game they they play better with Desmond Bain and then he's out. And then it's like without him they play just as good. So, I don't know. It's really hard to gauge Memphis. And I'm going to go Sacramento here. Now, on, in the other side, the Milwaukee Bucks and the Cleveland Cavaliers. Now, before the season, I actually picked the Cleveland Cavaliers – to go to the finals and beat the Milwaukee Bucks in the process of doing that. But I think at this point, it's just so hard to expect that just because, you know, we've seen what the Bucks have done all year long. Uh, I know they're only separated by a couple games, but, I mean, Giannis is arguably the best player in the league. Drew Holiday is playing, like, the best version of himself in probably four years or so, probably, like, that five years it would have been, like, that year with uh, New Orleans in the playoffs. Um I think that just all all year long, he's kind of stepped up big time. And I think Chris Middleton will start to get into a groove by then as well. So I got Milwaukee in six. And then Philadelphia and Boston. I think Philadelphia will win this in six games as well, I'll say. Um, You know, Embiid, it seems like the past few years, like they've had some injury unluckiness. Um, Last year, Embiid got injured before the Heat series. Then he was playing on the torn meniscus against Atlanta. Like, they probably should have been to the conference finals maybe one or both of those last two seasons. And then the year before, like, they also had injuries. Um, The only time that they probably have in the last four or so years, they lost on a Kawhi Leonard quadruple balance shot. Uh, So, I don't know. I think that Embiid will lead them to the conference finals uh, for the first time in the era around him. 
And then in the conference finals for the West with Denver and Sacramento, uh, this is so tough. And I think, honestly, it'll go down to the wire. But I, I got Denver winning in seven. I think that ultimately this is where the experience, like, it, it, it can get you about this far for Sacramento, having pretty much not a whole lot of experience, maybe underrated, though, just because Harrison Barnes is a champion. Kevin Herter has been to the conference finals. Sabonis has been to the playoffs multiple times. So uh, Terrence Davis was on one of the best teams in the league in Toronto. So, I mean, there's just a lot of guys that do have experience. But, I mean, come on. Like, Denver's already been this far as well. And then pretty much a lot of their core guys were on the team then. So I think Denver will go to the finals in – uh i'll say six games I, I don't know if i just said six or seven before that but i'll say six and then in the easter conference finals with the bucks and the sixers ah, this is so difficult i feel like i'm saying that over and over and over again but it ju- it just is difficult um but i don't know i think actually i'm going to pick the 76ers and that might be a huge mistake um because what we've seen proven out of the bucks but I mean, Giannis has played some really big dudes and really tough dudes that have made it hard on him, guys that have put up a wall against him, essentially. But he's never played Joel Embiid in the playoffs. That's what I'll say. And I think, like, you know, James Harden, this it's basically now or never for James Harden, you know, because he wants to get paid in the summer. And this might be his last great chance at a championship. So I think that they'll move on to the finals and they'll play Denver. And... I think that the NBA Finals prediction will probably be – it'll go seven games. And, man, this would be good because Jokic and Embiid going against each other. But I'm going to go with the Denver Nuggets, unfortunately, for the Sixers. Um, but I'm going with the Denver Nuggets. It, it's just Jokic for, has been proving – I think that this is kind of what he's – after at this point because i feel like it seems like the narratives have kind of switched and it looks like maybe joel Embiid will be named the mvp i could be wrong about that but it seems like the narratives are starting to like turn a little bit but i feel i feel like Jokic is going to be like okay so if we're going to discredit me in these ways for the mvp award why don't i get the mvp that matters the most and that being like the finals mvp and that might just be what he does um and yeah, I think that they got, like, you know, Aaron Gordon, who they could throw on uh, Harden or on Maxi at points to make it difficult on them. Um, you know, I think Jokic is big enough to hold his own in the post against Embiid. You know, if Embiid, like, brings him out more, it'll be harder to guard him. But at least, like, backing down, like, he's definitely strong enough to hold his own. So I'm going to go with um, the Denver Nuggets to win the championship. But, uh Yeah, man, appreciate you uh, having me on. Thanks again. Um, I'm excited to see. I'm excited to see how this turns out. (laughs) Um, But I'm I'm excited to see how the rest of the season and the playoffs go. And hopefully, I'm kind of right. And hopefully, hopefully, we're both right (laughs) to an extent. But uh, yeah, man, thanks.